This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Tabletop Deathmatch is a game design competition that Cards Against Humanity is sponsoring. Something that we consistently underestimated from season one of Tabletop Deathmatch was just how much demand there would be for a contest like this. This year's Tabletop Deathmatch, I'm just hoping to see more new, exciting ideas that I just wouldn't see at a big publisher or something like that. Guys, we should probably film this fucking series <laughs> <laughs> And stop talking about the Backstreet Boys! <laughs> I want to live in a world where uh, anyone can make whatever weird kind of independent game they want. So when we were going through almost 300 game entries, it was definitely, definitely a challenge to read through all of them and to sort of pick out which ones were better than the others. Um, this one is called Bruin USA. It is a, essentially a Euro style board game about being a craft brewery. And it looks like you, it says you're striving to be the best brewer in the nation by competing for ingredients, craft beers, and positioning your brewery. So basically this would be popular with the 50,000 breweries already in Chicago. My name is Adam, my game is Bruin USA, and uh, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So Bruin USA is a game about launching beers across America. It's for two to five players and it plays in about under an hour. It's a super light, casual, very approachable and simple game. In Bruin USA, a player will collect ingredients to launch a multitude of beers and the game ends when one player launches five beers. Um, the goal when launching your beers, though, is really to establish region control. And each city has a favorite uh, type and style of beer, and so you can't just launch any beer in any city. It's, it's somewhat constructed. The beer card has uh, a few different components to it. So it has a quality number, um, it has ingredients that go into launching this beer. So this beer needs one grain, three water, two hops, and two yeast. Every, every beer needs all four of those ingredients. Um, this beer is of color family white as well. So when you launch this beer, you need to look for a white spot on the board where this beer can fit. So a little background about myself too is I am a, a, a hobbyist home brewer. And so I really wanted to represent the, the four key ingredients that go into a beer. And so you have grain, you have uh, hops, you have water and you have yeast. I really enjoy the, the beer creation process. And I know for a fact that not everyone knows what goes into brewing a beer. And so I, I wanted a game that, that delivered that education piece, also delivered competition, planner interaction, a little bit of strategy as well. So I was on the way home from work, listening to a podcast. Um, podcast was Building the Game with Rob Couch, and he was talking about his experience with the Tabletop Deathmatch. I got home and I was like, I wonder what this Tabletop Deathmatch thing is, where, where they're at this year with it. I saw that the submission um, was, was due in a week, and I said, I'm gonna make a game, and that game is gonna be called Bruin USA. Some things I really wanted to focus on was, how do I make this game fun? How do I keep the player interaction that I'm promising? And so I took a look at the values of ingredient cards that I had, and I said, what is the probability that if someone challenges someone else to a brew fest that they're going to win the challenge? This is my engineering nerdy side, like I'm analyzing statistics here. I'm saying, what is the normal distribution of this set of ingredients? After I was playing the game a little bit, I noticed like the underdog wasn't winning enough brew fest. So I changed the values in the ingredient set so that, that it was a higher probability that you know upsets could happen within these brew fests. I was, I was extremely shocked when I got an email back. It, it actually came really quick, and I was walking in the hall at work, and I, I definitely threw a fist pump that got a few odd looks from a few coworkers, but I knew I'd put a lot of work into the game. I knew the game was in a, a pretty fun, playable state. Um, I knew it was a little bit raw at the time, too, but you know, I knew I had something going, and I had a little, little bit of validation that the game had, was a cool idea. Being able to have access to professional resources, um, potentially a film crew coming my way, 
um, a, you know, a trip to Gen Con, like that's just unbelievable. All right, so the first asset we're looking at here is, uh, is, is the game box, the logo, as well as some other um, elements that, that we wanted to incorporate to scream beer, scream revolution, scream handcrafted, um, home brewed. First off, the logo is killer. Um, Chris put that together kind of on really short notice. So we've got this extended deadline because you're printing it on your own. That's um, right. What, what is our deadline? Is that uh... Literally the deadline is the, my flight to Gen Con leaves on Friday morning. I, I have a, at, at, at work, I have the a print services and, and they've committed to turn around a three day print job. So I, want, I don't want to like butt it up to Friday, but um, the deadline is uh, Sunday night to have a, a final file ready for this print services um, to be able to print this thing out. And then that, that leaves me one day to prototype it with, with paperboard and, and adhesive and all the fun stuff. All right, that sounds totally doable. So when working on the game, I mean, being a game about beer, it, it puts you in the beer mood. So being about a month, I think I've probably had, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 beers you know, dur during the process of this game. And I think it, it's just a little bit of motivational fuel to keep going on it. Some of those nights are really late and having a beer by your side is always a welcome helper. So I thought a lot about going into this tabletop deathmatch. Um, what, what are my expectations gonna be? You know, my, my goal in life has really become how do I add value to society? And I think, you know, creating cool, unique, valuable products is one of those ways to do that. I'm gonna be exposed to a lot of really, um, you know, really smart people. And I, I wanna make sure that I, I leverage my network when I'm there as well as compete for, for winning the competition. My name is Adam Raymer and I'm from Minneapolis and I'm a little bit new to the board game uh, design industry. Um, the game's called Brewin USA. Players take the role as a startup brewery at the inception of the craft beer revolution. To start Brewin USA, players receive ingredients from the ingredient hopper. The hopper supplies players with the water, hops, yeast, and grain they need for their beers as well as organics, wild cards which can replace any of the four basic ingredients. The hopper also contains rare ingredients called adjuncts. Adjuncts are additives like pumpkin or coffee, and although they are required by certain beer recipes, for example, a coffee stout, players can also add adjuncts to any beer to raise its quality. Once a player has enough ingredients to launch a beer, they must choose where to launch it. Since different cities like different types of beer, players can only launch beers where the population will support it. Each city on the game board has two color-coded slots that correspond to different types of beers. If a player wants to launch a beer in a city where another player's beer already occupies the market, a brew fest occurs. Players draw two random ingredient cards from the ingredient hopper and add their total value to the value of their beer. The beer with the highest value wins the city, and the losing beer is displaced. If a player's beer is displaced after a brew fest, they can either choose to discard one of their hidden agenda cards to relaunch it on their next turn, or wait to enter it into another brew fest, as long as the city being fought over will support that beer. The game ends once a player launches their fifth beer. At the end of the game, players total up their points, adding up the point values of their beers, regional control tokens, city bonuses, and any completed hidden agenda cards. The player with the most points wins. It gets you going pretty quick. I like that it was very simple to pick up and with very few instructions, we were all just playing the game very quickly. I wanted to make this really simple and approachable. I have some friends that are borderline in the board game hobby right now, and so I wanted to you know, kind of like sway them in a little bit, and this game has done it really well. We've actually um, turned this game into a drinking game a few times, and that would be an interesting um, thing to build a community around. Maybe that's the expansion pack. Maybe that's an expansion. <laughs> So when you launch your beer, is that your entire turn? That's your entire turn. So you're either drawing ingredients or launching a beer. Okay. Um, players are encouraged to name their beers. And so yeah. I think, you know, we can come up with some creative names as well. The Tears of the Damned is the name of this beer. So two water, three grain, four hops, 
I miscounted. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> tears of the Dead are from streaming down my face at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so instead, I'm just gonna very casually uh, draw this card. Nice. I love that Bruin USA had this very thematic immersion in this world of craft brewing. And for someone who's really into that, it could be a good entree into more complex Euro games of that of that type. There's uh, the homebrew, homebrew store that I frequent. There's a big state fair in Minnesota, and if you bring in a random homebrew, you can enter it into a competition. And so I, I was going in there and I was buying these colored bottle caps, and they asked me, they're like, are you going to be entering your beer into a competition? Because we don't suggest you use a colored bottle cap, because you're trying to tip off the judges. They're like, you're going to get downgraded for that. And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I'm kind of entering a competition. <laughs> but I think they're gonna like the colors. I so. was very influenced by the color of this bottle <laughs> yes. cap, I will say. I'm going to launch, I think, a beer. Kind of call it Brotherly Love Light. Nice. Because it's got organic water. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked that it was easy to learn. In the beginning, the creator was rattling off a whole lot of rules to us, and I was like, oh no, did I get ro roped into a really complicated Euro game? But I picked up on it pretty quickly, and I also really like the graphics. They're really clear and iconic, and that attracted me as well. I want to launch it in Philadelphia. It's called Philadelphamber. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah, very good, that's yeah. why I can only launch it in Philadelphia. Yeah, no, I, that would be awkward if it were from Boston. Yeah, yeah, it has a pumpkin in it, so I'm trying to launch it, attempting to launch it there. All right, so we have a brew fest. So the way we're going to resolve a brew fest, you're going to want to place all the bottle caps on it first. And each player is going to draw two ingredient cards, flip them over. That will be the what resolves the conflict of the brew fest. So the total of the beer quality plus the two ingredient cards that you drew, that you drew um, that's what you're comparing for the other person. One of my concerns with Bruin USA for people who are more into strategy games is that a lot of the choices seem kind of obvious. There's not a lot of things that to penalize you for not playing additives on your beers or to enter brew fests whenever you get a chance. I'm gonna launch uh, this berry lager in Chicago. So it's gonna be called uh, Windy Berry Bum Liquor. And uh, it's, it, it, the, the logo is like a, like a strawberry with a big gross tongue. And like all the moms have been complaining about the billboards. It's really disgusting. I think if the judges have had a lot of beer, then they're going to be really into the theme of this game and they're going to like it because they've had a lot of beer. It depends on what time of day it is when they judge it. And the thing that makes this successful is that it's got coffee for extra buzz. It's got more coffee for double buzz. It's got some berries and some citrus. <laughs> got everything in it because that's also, uh, I got a launch of beer with four or more adjuncts. All right, look at that. The additives kind of didn't make sense. If you were able to just throw whatever in, you could get a bunch of points and it could be fairly random. I don't think anybody else wants Chicago. <laughs> we're the king of Chicago here. This beer is the king of Chicago. Chicago being what it is, I think I'm going to launch into the Twin Cities. Prince's Midnight Buzz. I don't know. <laughs> Something with some coffee and little, little citrus. Add it on there. I was citrus on board. Coffee. I was citrus. on board until the citrus. This is my favorite. <laughs> yes, that's right. What's that? Espresso? Oh, and grapefruit. And grapefruit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The note of grapefruit you didn't expect. All right. Well, it's cold here, so why not? Actually, it, it's probably raspberry. My main concern with Bruin USA, a.k.a. Ticket to Ride Beer, is that it borrows a lot from that game, but doesn't, it doesn't solve all the problems that Ticket to Ride solves. You can be stuck not being able to place anything because everyone needs the same cards instead of different people needing different cards. This is ironic that Marcus is in this game because he doesn't drink. We could guess that he didn't drink because he made a coffee stout with citrus. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I like about Bruin USA is it has a lot of Ticket to Ride elements, which is good to get new gamers into, but it has a more accessible theme that I think a lot of my casual friends will find a lot more fun than trains. I would buy Bruin USA for a friend of mine who doesn't play any other board game and has never heard of Ticket to Ride. So one for every bottle cap, yep. two for every city, and then for every region control card, one. That you I, own. That, one, yeah. yeah, region control card is 10 points. Yep. Right. Then you're going to move to how many cities do you own? You own one, uh, one city. Uh, two. two. Two cities. OK, so four points there. Okay. Um, then you're going to count bottle caps. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that is in-game scoring. 
Yeah, you know, my beers are an art form, okay and I am not going to compromise their integrity no, okay. in this contest. It's so, okay to be yeah, it's, it's all right. Not everyone can be a professional. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for playtesting. This has been, I think, really fun and insightful for me. I, I mean, I learned something as well, which is cool. I am actually personally not a huge collector of games, so when I do buy games, I'm really picky about the ones that I buy. But I would encourage Marcus to buy it, and then I can play it with him. <laughs> you should get really, really smart people to break it for you. I love the bottle caps. We think we can take down New York. You know, the Atlantic Rumble <laughs> beer hasn't lost a brew fest yet. I, I think it's, it's not quite there. Mm -hmm.